The guy on his knee, blue screen, is my friend. I was doing co-op with him. The guy holding his hands up is the person who invaded us. And I am the one holding the bouquet of roses. After just a couple of moments, a hunter came to help us with the invasion. As you can see here, he also took his clothes off when he saw what was happening and decided to T-pose. I was using Discord with my friend, but the invader and the hunter had no possible way to communicate. Elder Ring doesn't have a voice chat or any other type of chat at all. You can communicate slightly via gestures. The shenanigans that you see here went down for almost about an hour. It is the first time, I swear to you, that I have seen this in Elder Ring or in any Souls game. Me and my friend, we were laughing the entire time. And somehow, this is my version of Elder Ring. Just take a listen to this. The premise alone is extraordinary. No wonder so many first day one reviews back in February were overwhelmingly positive. Not many games offer this type of intro. The music alone sets the expectation for what it is to come. Hundreds of hours possibly of gameplay to no end. The song starts as a whisper and continues into this epic violent, emotional, angerful, laughter, satisfaction, and eventually the feeling of frustration that you just want to give up. It's all here in one big-ass beautiful package wrapped around, unfortunately, in the worst multiplayer server lag experience you've never played. Are you serious? I mean, straight to the point, feel free, honestly, not to purchase this yet and wait at least until 2023. Give it a year to mature. The reason for this is that they are improving the game as we play along. I felt that from the moment I purchased this back in February. For me, the 1.0 release day one, everything that came afterwards was one gigantic kind of work with the players to see what is good and what is bad. They're literally testing the game as we play along. The journey is a tedious one and it's not over. And they will constantly bring improvements. And if by the time you are listening to this, hopefully if you haven't picked up Elder Ring yet, you just might want to wait. Have the patience, give it time for this to mature. I mean... I had so many disappointment moments because of the performance of this game. At the time, I just felt like uninstalling it altogether. First impressions are everything. When you meet someone, first impressions are completely what defines your relationship from that moment on. And day one release, 1.0 patch was a horrible first impression. Reason why I kind of hurried to deliver this video. And I told the truth then the way I'm telling it right now. The difference between then and now, it's been a couple of moments and what I've seen and felt along the way. You know that moment when you kind of fall in love with this anticipated video game? The honeymoon phase. Well, that phase did not exist for me. You know, that fresh love, that perfect matchmaking. Elder Ring had a very rough start. My first review was a sad one because it was a sad experience. I paid, you know, full price for a AAA game, anticipating since forever from a multi-million company and it had so many technical issues. I mean, it left a sour taste in my mouth. I often hear things from very known reviewers. They talk about secondary quests and main quests that you can finish the game in 20 hours, that you can finish the game in 15 hours if you do the main quest. Here's my take on Elder Ring as an experience. Everything is required. Playing this otherwise is playing it wrong. I just, I, <laughs> let me explain. Unlike any other video game out there is familiar somewhat to this one, you know, action RPG that gives you a journal, a quest tab, where clearly you are faced with separation. 
main quest versus secondary quest and a couple of explanations for each event so you know exactly where you left off here this separation clearly does not exist it's a completely new take at least not to the naked eye you gotta go really deep to see the order of things and some of us have not yet seen it you're playing this to the point where everything is required Careful, it's never forced upon you, not for a second. Instead, it's all simply done by piquing your curiosity. Let me see what's over there. Let me see if I can climb on that, if I can jump on that. Let me look at the map and see how exactly can I get to that spot. Sure enough, everywhere you will find something of interest. And you, you got all sorts of funny moments, you know, where you look at some place where you feel feel like there might be something to discover, yet there's a dead end with no item. But you will find writing on the ground, signs left by other players, hinting at the fact that they too have searched in that same exact spot. It's, it's joyful. I guess gamers all think alike. And back to the idea that everything is required. You will find a cave. You will find a hidden path, something that leads to a talisman, a unique weapon, or just upgrade materials that are so important. Later on in game, you will end up pretty much using all of them. And please do so. I mean, don't be that guy who rushes the game with one single build. The game offers you like numerous items for you to respec your stats. Take advantage of that. Have fun with it. Play around. Elder Ring clearly invites you to be curious and to be playful. Nothing the way I see it is optional. Optional does not belong to Elder Ring. Everything goes. Everything must be discovered. It's beautiful and it will hurt you, no doubt. So why not? I can take you to the round table hole. Dictating your direction is not what Elder Ring had in mind. It's subtle. Sights of Grace offer an arrow-like direction to where you should be heading just in case you ever get lost. <laughs> but it's Elder Ring. It's impossible to get lost. It's impossible to have messed up your build. There's a weapon and a skill for every occasion. Respec is always an option multiple times. You play it your way however you want it. There are no mistakes in Elder Ring except for the server connection in multiplayer. That's a mistake. You're not helping! George R. R. Martin has quite a thing about dragons. This much is clear. And since this is pretty much his storytelling, everything here is connected to dragons. Every area that you explore has one specific dragon or multiple ones and they all offer a different experience when you're fighting them more or less they'll do probably the same attacks but they give you the feeling like it's not a copy paste and they're important and to this regard i don't want to give any spoilers to the point of the gameplay there are three main ways that i've narrowed this down in which you can play elder ring the right way the way it was meant to be played. One, do not use Google. Two, finish the tutorial. Do the first boss, the horseman, right after you exit the catacomb. That guy is still a part of the tutorial. Do not continue your journey one step further into this beautiful world without finishing the tutorial. You have to defeat that first boss. You will thank me later. If at any given moment you get stuck on a boss, do not persevere. It won't make you a better player being stubborn and trying 40 times to fight that boss over 3 hours long without making any real progress. Take a step back, find other type of attacks, find other type of weapons, do something else. Don't persevere in your own misfortunes. A couple of times per boss and if he's not over, do something else. Leave that frustration at the door of the boss and just do and play something else. After almost 200 plus hours and like it's been like what two months and a half since the game was released, I finally understand how From Software has intended for their game to be played. And the key word here is organic. 
bio degradable by organic whatever there's literally hundreds of tutorials being released on a daily basis on youtube not the way this game was intended uh i mean it, it, this is sad because my first playthrough i cheesed everything i had to look at all the guides where to find my items etc and it wasn't that fulfilling i went back to fextra life's map on wiki every five minutes that's not the From Software way. That's not the real Elder Ring. Let everything up to chance play organic. The game starts you at the main menu screen, right? You are greeted with the wallpaper. In a few seconds, this epic music begins to play as it kind of announces what your journey across the world will be like. By now, from what you've seen, I guess you've read about Elder Ring, you've seen stuff about it. The game doesn't hold your hand, this much is clear. And many seasoned gamers, just, just like myself, first off, kind of found it a bit annoying. I know I did. This is something else. It's unfamiliar, easy for one to dislike because there's no sense of real direction. But right there at the surface of all of this, you will get your bearings. And by the surface, I mean the map. Oh, oh, this is important. I feel like this must be one of the best topography ever made in any video game. At first, there's nothing there but small lines on dirt. It's up to you to find each piece of the map individually. Once you've uncovered a certain area, the thing you need to do first is zoom in. Zoom in is a must. This is how you must look at the map. The cartographer has done an amazing job here. You will notice roads that travel underneath bridges, rooftops of what seems to be buildings, castles, small areas, houses, and towers. All places for sure that hint that something must be there, and sure enough, there is. And then you start to question yourself. How do I get there? How do I climb that hill? that mountaintop. I know there's something there, I just need to get to it. Use the markers at all time, always. You need the markers to set your own path, to remember things as you come back to the game after a few days. Come on, not all of us have the luxury of playing this non-stop. Everywhere you'll find a character, right? An NPC. Everything matters. Like I said before, pay attention to the story. Elder Ring is one of those games that we have not seen in a while that require you to use a notebook. Yep, yeah, seriously. When was the last time you ever used a notebook in a video game? Because each quest from Skyrim to Assassin's Creed, etc., they all keep a journal under the menu that tells you where you are and who you talk to, etc. This is definitely not the case here. No, with Elder Ring, you need your own notepad. You gotta write down NPCs' names, place a marker when you find them on the map, and a couple of hints of what they wanted you to do or stuff they told you. After 20 hours, like no joke, 20 hours of gameplay later, literally, you will find something that is specifically related to a certain quest line. And once again, you're gonna say, hey, man, like, what's Google for? What did I say? Like, what did I say? Forget about Google. You just gotta immerse yourself. Assume the role. It's a role-playing game. There's no shame, man. Like, just use a notebook. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? My very first review was... After about 20 hours of gameplay, around that time, rushing the entire thing, trying to see as much content as possible, just so I can complete the experience and to spill out a review. It was one gigantic lag. Sure enough, everything had problems and issues. Lag affected my entire playthrough, boss fights, you name it, multiplayer. With a few updates along the line, the major lag has kind of gone away, mostly. Even though stuttering and crashing to desktop is still very much present, and there's nothing you can do about it. A small amendment would be to play this 100% offline, even removing the anti-cheat altogether. It shows great improvements. However, I don't think it's the real solution. 
since this is clearly meant to be played online or else it's just not the same game it's just not gonna be all the ring that i know and love you need player interaction you need their signs you need their guidance you need to put your own markers down when you find something cool you need the pvp you need the co-op it's all a part of the experience online is the only way to play this and speaking about playing oh blurred lines this is pretty much majority of my elder ring experience so far after so many hours and two months and a half later something that i can't really recreate in my mind with ease with like a clear picture i've died in so many spots i've spent countless of hours trying to defeat bosses there were extreme fun moments laughter with my friends in co-op moments of joy of great satisfaction when we are able to take down a bad guy small things like that right hidden areas that we didn't knew existed that we just stumbled across them to extreme agony and frustration lag stutters crashes to desktop in the worst moments possible you can imagine getting invaded but that wasn't the problem dying because of lag or network disconnects and issues that was the real problem Cameras fucking suck in this game, man. They do. They're fucking terrible, man. It goes it goes from a nine from a nine out of ten game to like a seven point eight out of ten because of this camera that's glitching. I'm glitching through pillars, rock, mountains, castles. I'm glitching through the body. I'm glitching through my own glitch. <laughs> There's clearly between me and this video game a love and hate relationship, but as I'm watching famous YouTubers, those guys have the same issues like I do. Even if I were to put aside the technical difficulties that clearly impact this journey, which is almost impossible to overlook, you cannot notice that it is worth every single cent. And there are moments where you kind of hang back and just go wow you won't find me talking about elder ring with hype or anything like that using words like those other dudes oh it's a masterpiece no it's it's not a masterpiece it's technically still very very flawed and that's not what a masterpiece looks like performance is horrible we've seen better graphics you just gotta have to deduct points for this. Come on. There are other companies out there. They really are. They exist. Who were able to implement quests and NPCs far superior way than From Software has been doing it. We know this can be done better because we've seen it. Clearly, this cannot be a masterpiece. It's not. But being realistic, this is still worth it and pretty damn good. When it works. Elden Ring is still the latest and greatest attempt at a Souls genre game created by the original makers. And this time around, we're faced with an adventure taking place in a open world. Ooh, 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 ooh this, I mean, hmm. Over the years, we've heard open world countless of times, and how many of you, just like myself, kind of got fed up with the whole idea? Open world done right is hard to find. This is not not done right. This is done extremely well. This is done exactly how I want all my open worlds to be from now on. It's not perfect by any means but it sure is quite spectacular at times. Let's talk a little bit about story. I'm not gonna show you a lot. I'm not gonna spoil you anything that you have not already seen. This time around, you are not unkindled. Remember that guy? No, you are tarnished. Sounds kind of familiar. You don't have bonfires. No, you have sites of grace. No more souls. This time you get runes. The concept is... Mm, kind of the same. You must strive to become the Elden Lord. And guide you down the path 
to becoming Elden Lord. Quests, they are. While many NPCs have a particular way of telling you what's about to happen in their life. If they say something along the line of, I'm going on a journey, it means next time you're going to come to that place, you're not going to find them there. He's gone, and if you are unlucky, you won't be able to find him even if you finish the game. This has happened to me. This is where the organic gameplay uh, comes into place. It's about discovery at your own pace. Sadly, you might finish the game and not be able to finish some quests. And yes, that's the reality of it. The story does have consequences. It does. Overall, story in Elder Ring is king only if you play it like that you could play it for the pvp and kill bosses and then the story really takes a step back blurs into the background and you don't even know it existed because even if you skipped every single line of dialogue of the npcs you can still enchant your weapons you can still kill all the bosses. In fact, you can even kill the NPCs altogether. You won't lose much. You give them uh, at the round table the bell so you can have access to all of their items. Like I said before, you can do this your own way, man. There's no wrong way. The world is open. Go where you like. Do whatever you like or can. You'll get killed if you stumble into the wrong place. You will get killed many, many times. There's an indicator on your HUD that shows where you last dropped your runes and fret not because you only drop your runes, not your items. Your valuables in the inventory stay there. Remember, items will always be more important than runes. Always. And like a very small example, why is this? The way they created this game is that as long as you have the skill and press the button fast enough, you can dodge, you can roll, jump or block attacks. Technically, you can defeat enemies with lesser gear as long as you are good at it. And the game invites you to get good. A level 50 can kill a level 70 player in PvP, no issues. You can parry with your vanguard shield, or as a mage, you can defeat anyone with a carrion slasher. Don't have the necessary level, but you do have fast reflexes. Learning the boss's mechanics and moves is one way to do it. Elder Ring is about skill, not about farming, but getting better gear and in can and investing in your stats level up kids that's always very helpful my advice don't think too much at the beginning of the game which character to make it's not that important any starting build can be changed during gameplay there's no wrong decision you can respec at you can respec your entire character very early on no level up points get lost everything can be changed a weapon that you find useless will be valuable to you if you respec down the line. At every boss entrance, you will find statues that help you summon strangers to help you out. This will also trigger the conflict, as invaders can connect your world as well when you are in co-op. In Souls games and in Elder Ring, help comes at a high cost. It's the lag, that's the cost. Hi. Okay. There's a way to play with friends and journey throughout your discovery right from the beginning. For me, co-op is a must and the game clearly shows you that this is how it was meant to be played. From the starting point, like within two or three minutes, you get the items that you need to summon a friend. That's, that's awesome. Elder Ring wants you to co-op, wants you to interact with other players constantly. The entire experience was meant to be played with others, not alone. You do have the option to go fully offline if you are the solidary type, nothing will stop you. More than anything that I've seen in any other video game that Elder Ring brings to the table is quality of life. Good, good implementations that I wish Witcher 3 or other video games would have had. So much has been fought and implemented in the right way. Potions refill after defeating a group of enemies makes free roaming so much easier. No weapon durability, thank god. Torrent saved my life constantly and hiding the hub 
for more immersion and also acting as a warning indicating you that you are in combat. You get unlimited amount of stamina when you are not in combat, so it will help you just traverse the world much more easier. A pouch system that truly comes in handy. Oh my gosh, unlimited inventory space, so much quality of life. Things that I wish from now on that I will see in all the other games. Seriously, the fact that they're hiding the hub and the infinite stamina when you're not in combat. Oh, so good, so good. The story is super, super cryptic. Even if you pay attention to the NPCs and, you know, you write stuff down, you remember locations, etc. Uh, you, you have no idea what to do. And if you didn't pay attention, uh, I mean... I know a friend who skipped all the dialogue and all the cutscenes. He couldn't care less. He doesn't know that much English to begin with. Just couldn't care. And he just wanted to defeat the boss. There's a lot of folks out there who play it like that. And the game gives you that option. But oh, the story can be heartwarming. It really can. Characters that never ask for your help, but you're helping them anyway. Rewarding moments. You can save someone's life. You will have moments of sorrow, moments of pain, or just joy. This is a crumbling world that you just stumbled upon. And everyone here has their own agenda. Remember this as far as story is concerned. No one here is really your friend. They all want something from you uh, or just they need to use you in some way. There's no good ending. There is... Well, there is no ending. Emphasis on no. This really feels like a to be continued all the way. I'm not talking about just a DLC that will open some other parts of the map. No, no. I'm talking about super potential that I'm sure they're going to exploit. I mean, we are looking at Elder Ring 2, possibly Elder Ring 3, just how they did with Dark Souls. And speaking of which... Uh, yeah, Dark Souls is clearly dead and not coming back. And from its ashes, like literally, because so many reused assets and whatnot, comes a new game. One that will, one that we will hear for sure in the years to come. 2022. I think that 2032 will be a decade full of Elder Ring, both for part two and three. Ten years worth of Elder Ring from now on, it kind of makes sense to me. Experience the story in such a big scale and with DLCs and continuations to all the stories of the NPCs that we got to meet in our first game. The world is sure is beautiful. It, it, looks, it looks amazing at times and it's never stops reminding you just how dangerous it can be also. And in my almost 200 plus hours, there were many, many moments when I had to take a screenshot. It was just mandatory. Just stop and look at the view, man. As for when all of this is over, end game plus, nah. No, I mean it. Like, don't. I cannot recommend you to start the game all over with the same high-level character. For one... Uh, Come on, you're going to be like 200 plus level. Multiplayer and PvP is probably going to suck. PvP at level 200 plus, people just one-shot you. You can one-shot them and they can do the same to you. It really kind of ruins the moment. If you want to start this again, by all means, because I finished this three times with three different characters, uh, multiplayer is so much fun at lower level. Starting again fresh with a brand new character, maybe taking different decisions, uh, doing stuff differently, talking to the NPCs in different locations will give you more perspective. If you want, start the game all over again. Do it like Donkey, do it like me, do it like other people. End game plus? No, I don't think that's a good idea. As a conclusion, oh, one thing I did take from Elder Ring, though it was the wow moments, the jaw-dropping moments that game had to offer. The most wow, amazing moments I've seen since Mass Effect 3, if you believe it or not. There's stuff in plain sight or in the most unexpected places you can imagine. 
from roaming the plains with your horse, traversing the morning mist before the sun gets to rise, or a hidden catacomb under the city that randomly changes its layout. NPCs' character that appear out of nowhere telling you that they want to help you out and point you in the right direction, or this weird moment when you gotta get into a coffin after a boss fight that will shoot you across a waterfall just to take you to the next area oh man elder ring just doesn't let up it's just moment after moment this is clearly special no way around that but it is not in its final form maybe one year from now on two years from now on all the dlc will come out they'll do something with this performance and the servers and everything's going to be fully fully brushed off it needs a couple of more major updates and for sure dlc that will continue the story of our favorite characters right now performance for a lot of us is still disappointing i mean come on rtx graphics cards with the one frame per second bug I got an AMD, my performance is decent, but I get crashes to desktop, just like Nvidia users. There's a lot that needs to be fixed here. They're still constantly, and I mean constantly, like one day ago, they just added a new patch that fixed a certain boss and a couple of weapons. They're nerfing weapons, they're nerfing skills, they're adding more to this, more to that. They haven't made up their minds. They're testing as we play along to see what works and what doesn't. And that honestly kind of bothers me. I figured by now they would have everything all together, but they don't. Still, plenty of NPCs that don't have their story finished and we're waiting. I mean, they're just stuck there saying the same thing over and over. We want to see a continuation to their story. You're paying for a full price video game, but at times you clearly see that it's not over. Recently, within the last two weeks, they were able to add NPC icons on the map. This was a finished game, right? Wrong. They keep adding stuff. And uh, it can be frustrating at times. This is not its final form. It is what it will be from now on. You be the judge if you want to pick this up right now or not. My name is Rakishu. Elder Ring. For sure, this is going to be game of the year. There's nothing out there to compete with it. Peace. Love for Ukraine. Let's stop this insane war. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Never mind. I've decided I would rather trust you than simply continue to spoil from within. Would you mind averting your eyes for a moment? <laughs>